Welcome back to Experience Points, your all-queer cast Starfinder podcast. I have the task of announcing that our lovely friends, Taylor and Megan, have to step away from the podcast for an indefinite time. We wish them all the best, and we will miss playing with them. We've started the process of finding new cast members and are looking forward to having no laps in our release schedule. We will be discussing having guest appearances slash introducing new characters where we find our way forward. There will be some announcements on Twitter, our website, and Facebook as we move to expand our Experience Points tribe. We hope to continue having amazing adventures with an all-queer cast, playing this game we enjoy so very much. Thank you for sticking with us, and I hope you'll join us in letting Taylor and Meg know that we think they are awesome and we will miss them. You can contact them with your well wishes on Twitter at Dungeons and Meg or at Milky Games. And now, let's continue with the story to discover what Bra has in mind for the crew and trying to figure out how we'll get off this moon. Cheers. And welcome back to Experience Points, your favorite all queer Starfinder real play podcast. I am your host and GM Miu. And in case you are wondering what you just stumbled into, uh, first of all, I would suggest you go back and listen to some of the earlier episodes where you might catch up on the story thus far. Uh, but I think that pretty much sums it up. We are just a bunch of queer people gallivanting about the universe, committing shenanigans. Uh, joining me is the phenomenal cast. If you guys want to introduce yourself real quick. Hello, I'm Kelric. I play the Noir Angus. Hi, I'm Taylor. I play the giant cow person, Phaedra. Or I'm Noir. Megan. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? <laughs> I'm Megan, and I play Captain Kira. I'm Punder, and I play the Verthani, Absco Cash. And I believe that Angus has a recap on what happened last episode. Okay, science officer report. Our beloved pilot put in a random away course which dropped us into an asteroid belt to get away from his family. We were fortunate enough to get out with the ship mostly intact, but we lost our drift engine. So we crash landed on a nearby habitable planet to do repairs. While we were working on the repairs, some sort of fungal ghost sperm thing came into the ship through the vents and started rewriting our computer and taking over the AI. Now we get to deal with bra. Yes, bra. Oh boy. This is what happens when you set random courses away. <clears throat> so much trouble. So much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we pick up where we left off, uh, having just asked the AI, what's up, bra? And it responded on the readout, I am bra. Um, Red letters are just sitting there staring at you. The AI has always functioned in the background, just kind of keeping the ship function, you know, moving smoothly. Uh, now it seems to be communicating now that the fungus has incorporated with it. Angus, I think I mean, we need to do a computer's check to just start seeing if you can track down where Bra is located in our computer system. See if I can figure anything out. Oh, we're starting off strong. I rolled a four plus my nine for a 13. With a 13, uh, you're having a beast of a time trying to find even find bra like you find the ai system that's fine there's some sort of like weird subroutine that you can't track down that that seems to be running at least that's what it seems like to you i'm used to computers being responsive but never in this manner phaedra do you know anything about this Esco, i have absolutely no clue i think we should try to reason with it I'm going to do a diagnostic on the piloting system. Okay. Engineering or computers or, pi or piloting? Uh, do engineering, I believe. All right. That should be fun. Untrained 15. <laughs> uh, as far as you can tell, all piloting systems, I mean, you, you shut down the computer. Like when you realize things were going on, y'all shut down like all the systems and you're just kind of turning them on one by one, just checking uh, them. Your piloting system, all your nav coordinates are there and in fact as, as you turn on your piloting system uh your nav maps pop up where you had it before and then it just starts like scrolling through oh. just every bit of information that it has and it seems to be marking like random places do i recognize them <laughs> so a lot of these places uh you've never even heard of I mean, I in your maps and yeah. 
the ones you you do recognize, I mean, there's a, several in in within the packed worlds, but nothing, no rhyme or reason that you can find. I'm going to turn around and be like, I want to see where this goes. I'm going to let this run for a bit, if you guys don't mind, if you folks. I, I have nothing better okay. to suggest, although I would say that we if our engineer here. would like to, to to try to reason with Bra, then perhaps you know you could come up from engineering and and have a little. Chitty chit chatty chat. So I'll have I'll have Phaedra go to where the rest of the group is. So I would like to ask Bra. Bra, is there something that you're looking for? <laughs> it it you can hear the the AI like processing this information before on the screen it pops up and says it just just this wall of text starts going in and it says, Bra has found interesting places to visit. And just begins listing a bunch of planets with, like, just interesting things there. I'm going to be scanning through this list as it's popping up. Um, and what kind of interesting things? Are these things that the rest of us would also find interesting or just that Brawl would? Uh, there's, uh, he has a, a place listed in, on Versus where they have uh, supposedly an amazing water park. Uh, there is, you know, it's overrated. you see Eox listed there. Uh, you, you see one place where it says that, uh, there, one, one place that you've never been, never seen, never even heard of, but it's in, it's in the maps in the, in the list for the, the drift registry. And supposedly there are six different suns and six different moons, all different colors. I mean, it, it's every, it's, it's this whole range of just interesting places in the universe. I may start ooing and aahing over some of the things that come through. I'm like, oh, I could go, oh, that sounds yeah, good. We're, cool. we're all like, oh, that looks like fun. Oh, <laughs> and so, Phaedra, what's the um, status on the drift engine? Are we, are we anywhere Oh, that here? thing's shot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Dead in the water. Oh, man. Your you drift engine that. is dead in the water. All right, well, considering the last time we talked about drift engines, I rolled so well I gave a dissertation on the topic. I would like to know if there's anything I can do to work with Phaedra to see if we can figure out a way to figure out what we need to repair it and see if we can scan the planet to find those things. Okay, go ahead and roll me a knowledge engineering. And do you want to roll that or do you want me to and you support? I'll, I'll roll. Okay, I will roll to support you then. Yes! Woo! Yes! Yes! I rolled a 17 plus 9 to assist, so that's a plus 2. And what and did you roll? 20, yes. And that 20 plus 9 for a 29. So 30. Plus 2 makes it 31. You know, beyond any shadow of a doubt, the coil is completely fused. You will have to rebuild another one from scratch. But mm. how to? Well, Hopefully. if you had the proper <laughs> tools and equipment, it would take you a couple of days. Unfortunately, you have none of that. So unless you have some brilliant MacGyvery ideas, which none are quite coming to you at the moment. I do have a starship. It's unlikely because you're going to need some very rare and very refined minerals. Well, I mean, bras are Bra right here. begins beeping at you and you hear a voice. The AI is now speaking to you as it comes through the speakers and says, Bra has found a ship. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bra has found a ship in orbit. It seems to be hailing us. Should Bra say hello? You know what? I'm going to humor it. You know what? Bra, answer that. There, there, there's this weird, like, chirpy, dinging sound that seems to indicate joy. That's the only word you can give for it. As your communicator, your, your uh, station opens up and you, you hear, This is the ship Silver Scale calling down to the ship on the surface. You seem to be in danger, or uh, seem to be having some trouble. Is there anything we can do to help? I... Damn straight, do you got an extra drift drive? Aye, and this is the ship Zephyr, under the command of Kira. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> ship Zephyr, I... we may be able to assist you with uh, anything. We would like to send down a, a party to see what assistance we can lend. They will be joining you shortly. That sounds excellent. I uh, would... Okay, when they start doing that, I want to scan, just do a general broad scan of the ship, just to, you know, nothing intrusive. Okay. I think I'm not trying to be a dick. Should I do a right. culture check? Give me a uh, computers. Okay, that's a 19. Okay. okay. 19. Oh, oh, I guess the ship uh, you... too. 
Okay, so that makes that 21. Uh, with 21, you get a scan and you pick up a power signature, but with all of the debris being so close to this, this actual, you're, you're actually on a moon, being on a moon, it's hard to get any kind of lock or reading on them. You are picking up a power signature, but it's not a signature you recognize. Hmm. And you've only had audio contact with them. Okay, so will our computer allow us to, you know, do some sort of visual of the incoming quote unquote help? Bra regrets to inform you that <laughs> there is too much interference for video signal as your ship thrusters begin sporadically firing and you would swear <laughs> the ship seems to be bouncing up and down. Well, I wonder what the interference is. Bra, uh, I, I wonder what's your opinion of, of these helpers that are coming in? Bra does not know who they are. Bra hopes they are here to help. They say oh, they are too. here to help. Do not worry. Bra will protect you. You are Bra's family. Thanks, Bra. Okay. I'm not even going to uh, say anything. <laughs> uh, so. I just look around. Anything y'all want to do before else. they, uh. And I just want to clock the look on George's face real quick. <laughs> because it's weird. George looks uh, mildly curious. <laughs> George is the best. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I am, uh, mildly curious. <laughs> George actually looks like he's having... Actually, George looks like he is really enjoying himself. Like, he looks curious, like, what are, what are we going to do about this? But he, he doesn't seem concerned. Okay. He just so seems... He's living his best life. <laughs> <laughs> we should all try to be more like George. I agree. Captain Kira, what, what would you want us to do before they get here? I'm not sure that there's much we can do. That's... Yeah, I mean, they are kind of just coming on their own, aren't they? And, I mean, we can't, like, leave. You really don't have any place to go. Fair. George, how good are you at digging holes? George, for, for the first time in his life, you see George, like, like his face looks abject horror. <laughs> and he's just, what? Uh, what uh, digging holes? You mean, like, like with a shovel and, and my muscles? Like, like me, dig, <laughs> digging <laughs> No, George doesn't dig holes. Oh, I mean, okay. if, if no, no, the no worries, says I have to, I guess I will, but, 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 I mean, hole digging, hour, that, that's not on my resume. An hour's not enough to, to build a trench anyway. <laughs> it was just a thought. Oh, okay, well, between you and me, uh, Mr. Absco, I, I, I'd much prefer you, you kept it in your head as a thought. <laughs> <laughs> If it's all the same. I'll consider that, George. Thank you. I want to look around. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Make eye contact with Phaedra and say, did, did George just get sassy with that school? That's new. Uh, I kind of like it, but that's new. George seems to be trying to, without drawing any attention to himself, work his way back to his room so he doesn't get asked to do any other manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So within... Uh, it's about probably 40 minutes or so. Uh, you see a small shuttlecraft. You figure it's probably one to two seater coming down and landing on your planet or uh, right near you. <laughs> Just a few kilometers now. near you. <laughs> yeah, your planet now landing uh, here in the here in the opening. Uh, they set down. OK, who wants to go out and meet them? And I stand up and I'm going to start heading out. Anyone come in with me? Might as well. Pedro will go. Kira goes. Yeah, I'm just gonna, we'll go as well. Okay, so the party comes out. You come up to the small shuttlecraft. The doors open with a hiss. Psh, and out steps. Not one, not two, but no fewer than half a dozen little short, maybe two foot tall, lizard-looking people with tails and silvery scales. And one of them wearing these, these very uh, nice robes and carrying a, a small staff steps up and says, I am Micmec, son of Micmec, descended from Micmec the Deliverer, who brought unto us Evelyn and culture and civilization. And he bows and says, how may we, the kobolds of Ship Silverscale, be of service? Oh, I love this so much. And all of the other, like, five kobolds sit there with their big black eyes just looking at you. Waiting for you to respond. I yeah, turn to Kira. Your drift engine? Ah, you need help with the drift technology. I have foreseen it in a vision that I would come to this place and meet you all, oh, no. and that we would be able to help you. Come, 
Let us look at your engine. And he begins striding toward your ship, and the rest of the kobolds are following. Phaedra looks at Angus and goes, if this gets ugly, I'm killing that one. <laughs> <laughs> there is no need for violence. <laughs> we are a peaceful people. Welcome. And this is our captain, Kira. I, I, she would, would be happy to give you a tour of the ship. And our engineer, ah, you, the drift engine. Captain Kira. And he reaches out and seems to kind of hesitantly, like, like he was in the presence of something special. <laughs> as he reaches out Blessed. and says, may I have the pleasure of shaking your hand? Uh, she, um, <laughs> she does it, yeah, okay. <laughs> and he, he holds it as though it is the most holy object he has ever touched in his life. And he shakes it, and the rest of the kobolds around gasp in wonder. <laughs> she takes her hand back. <laughs> <sighs> you all are so very precious. I should we maybe go look at the drift engine? <laughs> Start shooting. Of course. Fade right this Aaron way. And Kira into the ship. Go, go. <laughs> and he waves you all to follow him into your ship. Oh, to work yeah. on your engine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Follow him, we do. All right. He leads you straight down into engineering. And with a snap of his fingers, the other kobolds go to work and begin scurrying all over engineering, pulling off burnt out panels and circuits and replacing them. And they, they just go to work with like little, they have their little kits, their little uh, mechanics kits, and they're, they're just replacing whatever they can. As he stands, as uh, the their leader, Micmac, son of Micmac, descendant of Micmac, <laughs> stands there and says, "So, what do you think?" I... And just looks at you expectantly, like he's waiting for an answer. I think that I need some of these to take home with me. <laughs> says, "I am certain a few would be willing to join your crew and follow you on your grand adventures." Uh -huh. can, I just, can I say something real quick? Do we... <laughs> Do we just get our own NASCAR pit crew? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what it seems like. On loan. Yeah, uh, apps go into the bridge, and they are going to be working with Bra just to monitor their work. And whichever ones are working. And Bra is excitedly flashing new life forms. Much excite, new things. Like, just listing, like, random things, like, blood types and what kind of proteins are in their scales. It's just the scanners are going nuts, just constantly scanning them and, you know, scanning their shuttle. Bra seems to be soaking up all of this information. I'm going to grab Phaedra, and whichever kobolds are working specifically on the drift engine, I'm going to mm -hmm. in there with Phaedra and, and watch what they do. See if there's a way to record it so that if we're in this situation in the future, maybe we can duplicate this because if they can okay. get this thing working, that's cool. You can tell that all of the, everything they're doing is all exactly what you would have been doing to repair your ship. At, at, at some point, the uh, one, one of the kobolds comes up to the, the to Micmac and they begin conversing in a strange language. After which Micmac looks at you and says, it seems that your drift coil is completely burnt out. That is... Unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Yep, I, I mentioned that earlier. Small lizard thing. Be nice. Mm. It, I am it's Mick nice. Mac. Mick, Mick Mac, son, son of, of Mick Mac. Mac. Descendant of Mick Mac. Ah, so you know me. <laughs> yes, I've heard of you. Well, I believe we could arrange something, but uh, as with everything, there is always a price to pay. For that is the way of the universe. What do you want? I want you to come and have dinner aboard our ship. Well, I mean, that can't be that bad. We are the most ungracious crew in the history of crews. <laughs> <laughs> like, well. I feel like I'm the only person that's like overthinking this. I'm, I'm happy to go. Excellent, excellent. Uh, by the way, <laughs> you seem to have uh, some sort of biological being that is integrating with the circuits on your ship. Are you aware of this? Yes. Uh, it is fascinating technology. I, I would very much like for you to tell me how you uh, produced this. We found it. It was, it was here on, on this planet. Well, isn't that quite something? 
I, we know... It seems to be upgrading the systems as fast as we can implement them. Hi, his name's Bra. He's pretty cool. <laughs> Bra does indeed seem to be quite, uh, how you put it, cool. <laughs> and so for the next couple hours, uh, the kobolds get to work getting everything ready to replace your uh, your engine or, or your coil. Fantastic. All right. Are you getting anywhere with Bra, Absco? I don't know. So Bra seems to be just excited about the kobolds being on board. That That is where he was for a while. He's, he's looking at all of the, you can tell that Bra seems to be looking at all of the different systems on the ships and uh you see schematics popping up with power being rerouted in give me an engineering check oh so this is gonna be fun that's an eight untrained <laughs> eight untrained he's rerouting power i'm, I'm gonna ask and just be kind of you know blunt with bra but like what do you want bra what drives Everything you? stops all of his processes stop what does bra want what is yes. want hmm well, I mean, what what do you, do you do? Is do you have a directive? Like, what what is this? Bra does not understand. Bra is new. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, I'm 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 happy you're here. I guess. And and you hear the the memory banks like whir up, like it is just scanning, and finally he goes. Bra has found want. Uh oh. And then there's just that list of planets. Bra wants to. You hear everything whir up again, and then. Explore. Um, oh, we take him with us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, yes, of course, we can explore with you. The ship begins jumping up and down again. Uh oh. As his bra is just explore, explore, explore. <laughs> Meanwhile, in engineering, you guys are all working, and all of a sudden, the ship just starts like <laughs> launch thrusters keep going on and off. The ship's uh, bouncing around. I'd get on the. It settles down after a moment. Asko, what are you doing? Um, apparently, bra wants to explore. Excellent. Can you maybe run some diagnostics on it and see if you can find out where bra is residing in the ship? So that That's more your domain than mine. I, I just see that bra's routing power here and there i i don't know what any of that means i uh, phaedra if you keep watching them I'll, I'll i'm gonna go see what i can discover unless you want to it's up to you yeah i'll i'll watch the kobolds and so i'll go up to the the ship uh the bridge with Africa, okay and you know just start looking into what areas bra is affecting the most dramatically and okay. you know just sort of see so roll me an engineering check See if I can understand anything that they're doing. Okay. 11. You can tell that Bra is in the process of rerouting power all throughout the ship. All the systems are being rerouted and reconnected in a different configuration. Okay, so when you say that's happening, are they doing it, is it manifesting just along the circuitry, or is it ma also physically changing the ship? It seems to be... No, uh, it's, physically, it's physically altering circuits. Okay, so... We've already established that we have video recording. So I want to pull up mm -hmm. um, video of those areas that Bra is adjusting so we can see how that's happening. All right, you pull up video. Uh, you realize, first of all, he's pulling up, or, or he's hitting circuits everywhere, the entire ship. Everywhere you look, there is that white fungus. And it's laying itself into into the circuit board and then you can see it like shifting and moving and laying itself across circuits to cause the the to reroute the power um, it's just completely covering all of the inner bulwarks of, your hull so once it starts the reroute process does it become like physically static there so that it's what the currents are going along like is it actually incorporating itself into the ship physically or is it just sort of an overlay yeah pretty much that's what you see that's what it looks like it looks like it is completely incorporating itself absolutely 100 percent into your ship awesome fantastic so i will broadcast these visuals to everyone's calm so they can see what's going on and okay uh, phaedra is the person who i'm most interested in here because as our engineer, I think you would care the most. So what's the areas? And Phaedra, you're, you're seeing it in it beginning to soak up through the warp in, into your uh, your drift engines. The, these tendrils of white coming in and then just like weaving itself all through the engines. Down in engineering, it, you're really beginning to see this happening. I have a question for Bra. Bra, can you do me a favor? You hear the, the AI speaker. Favor? Bra, do favor. Favor, good, yes. Bra, do. 
Bra, can you bring up the shields real quick? Bra does not understand why, but watch! And Bra brings up the shields instantly. In fact, your shields, as uh, Phaedra, give me an engineering check as you're looking at the readouts on the shields. Total of 20, you see that the shields are functioning at 115% efficiency. Ha! This is what I was, ex this is what I was hoping for. In fact, as you look at all of the work Bra is doing, you realize that as it's integrating with your systems, it's upgrading them, leaving more power and more room for further upgrades. Almost as though your ship has become, well, partially organic at this point. Hmm. I do a sense motive on both Bra and the kobold guy. Okay. Both Bra and Micmac. Let's do one for Bra. Who knows what a fungus might think? He seems to be helpful and excitable. And a 19 for the kobold. Micmac seems to be quite pleased that whatever is, is going on is going on. Uh, almost as though he expects all of it. Can I do a mysticism check on him? Yes. 27. Micmac is obviously himself some sort of priest or religious figure. In fact, you can feel the divine energy coming off of him, but it's unlike anything you've ever felt before, any any other deity that you're familiar with. He is a mystic like yourself, but not it's not Desna's energy that is coming off of him. No, this is something different. Does he have any holy symbols? He does. Okay. You you see a a, a symbol that repeats itself throughout his clothing and on his staff. Do I know? What this symbol you is? do not. So you do not. Roll to investigate his staff. <laughs> I sense motive on the staff. <laughs> All right. What color is he wearing? Silver and blue. That's hmm. frightening. Sounds familiar. All right. And so the kobolds finish everything but the drift coil. And they are ready to head back to their ship to get the drift coil. And you will be joining them for dinner, of course. Um, of before, course, as agreed. Yes, but of, but before that happens, uh, while they're doing that work, I want to uh, <clears throat> talk to Bra real quick, and I want to pull up the schematics for how a drift engine is built and works. And, okay. And, Bra can find those. Oh, can you look over these schematics and tell me if this is something that you are able to do any repairs on yourself, or do we need to depend on McNock, McLack? <coughs> Michelangelo, I don't Bra, <laughs> you, you see all the schematics just flashing through the screen uh, at your station before it stops and you hear the voice. It, it sounds so disappointed in itself. <laughs> Bra cannot fix this. Bra needs new drift coil. That's okay. We're working on it. We're working on it. It's, it's, it's all right. Bra has failed you. <laughs> Who's a good bra? You're a good bra. I'm good bra. Good bra. <laughs> Uh, Good bra. And then all of the dashboard lights like light up <laughs> in this shower of lights. I swear this makes me think of like the rocket from the Little Einsteins. Ooh, I don't I'm even know. But yeah. I don't know. Could Google him because he's adorable. But okay. he's just getting awesome. Uh, okay. Can I do a check of sorts to make sure that like the work that the kobolds did, that they're not putting in something that like we don't want or don't know about? Smart. Like, oh, I don't know, a tracker of sorts? Do an engineering check. Smart. I love the. Our, our captain's face. You can't see it, but she is just like doing this her slipped. Yes, that's exactly what you should be doing. That's your job, lady. Yes. <laughs> Thirteen. As far as you can tell, everything is above board. Uh, and it's it's quite well the repairs are quite well done. Some of the technology isn't immediately like just like plug and play, but they're they're able to very quickly rig it up so that it works with yours. All right. Well, if nothing else, then before we go, I just want to direct Bra to our previous space battles and just, Bra, just so you know what you're getting into here. These things aren't super common, but they do sort of happen as we explore. So there you go. Just, yeah, you know, I want to be above board about this because if this ship, can, if this thing can control our ship, I don't need it spacing us when we get into a battle so it can run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. Bra's going to check it out. Cool. The kobolds would like to have you for dinner. What is your plan on getting there? 
I put on the uniform, George. If you would like, you may come up in the shuttle with us. If we all squeeze, we can all fit. So you want to put ten people in a six in a two-person shuttle? He looks quite quizzically at you. Two-person? This is at least an eight kobold shuttle. <laughs> Do you just look down at him and oh, see how tall you are? Wait. I suppose you are significantly larger. Yes. Well, we could make two trips or three. Do we have a shuttle? I think we should all squeeze. Um, well, I mean, are, are we off the ship or are we still on the ship? We're still on the ship. Um, You're on the ship. We have thrusters. We can. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, abroad. Do you we think you can, you can get up there? Launch us off the planet? Help us dock? You're gonna, as soon you're as gonna you say that, Bra shoots skyward. Oh. Oh, no. Just oh. shooting skyward as fast as he can. Didn't close the gate. <laughs> oh, no. Bro, close, close the doors, close the doors. Shh. Doors are shutting just before you hit the upper atmosphere. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And you rocket into space. Not Absco. Dancing, pirouetting around the... What do you mean, not Absco? The asteroids there. Uh, Bra is doing all of this. Uh, oh. Bra, mm -hmm. we need to work on your subroutines. The entire ship grinds to a complete halt for just a moment as it starts running a diagnostic on its subroutines. Absco. Before saying, diagnostic completed, subroutines okay. <laughs> and heading straight to Absco. the kobold ship where it... Yes. <laughs> pull up, pull up the, the damn procedures for flying these things so you can see it. Okay. Um, and so... Feed the information. Yeah. <laughs> if, if one does not exist, Absco creates a checklist for launching and for that, that sort of stuff, that, those procedures. Huh. Okay. <laughs> he does, Bra does get you to the ship. The kobolds are a little shaken up. That was quite interesting. Even I'm sure the rest of you are a little bit shaken at that point. I love it. Uh, but he pulls up and docks with a huge ship. I mean, this thing is like three times the size of your ship. Oh, okay. At least. Just just huge ship. And it docks alongside. And the doors, the, the docking doors open, the airlock purges as Micmac straightens his robes and goes, Yes, well, on to dinner. I suppose we'll have to go back for the shuttle. I, I hope you don't mind giving one of us a lift and lead you out. Well, do we have time to, like, change into our uniforms that George made us? Because I think that would be super fun. Oh, if you would like to, absolutely. I think that would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. And you put on your formal pinks. <laughs> formal pinks. <laughs> While that's happening, I would like to just have the computer do just some quick calculations based on how many were on the shuttle and extrapolate mm -hmm. out to the size of the ship on how many kobolds we can anticipate are on board this ship. Bra is reading over 200 life signs. Goodness. Okay. 200 happy kobolds. That's what we're hoping for. All right. I'll come out with my dress pinks on. Captain. Okay. Would you like to lead? Uh, I, sh I could, I could do that. Yep. Uh, where's George? Is he, is he joining us or? You don't want me to dig any holes, do you? <laughs> It'd be really hard to do that in the middle of space, but I think. That's what I'm counting on. <laughs> as he comes <laughs> out. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, you move through the airlock, and. Immediately, you are in a tiny, cramped hallway. You have to stoop over. Uh, Kira, your, your floppy hat goes from wall to wall. It sure does. Phaedra, you're the tallest of us, right? Ang How tall is Angus? 7'2". Oh, yep, I am the tallest. I'm 7'4". Do you fit in this hallway with your <laughs> horns? You are all <laughs> squeezing your horns or <laughs> ceiling walls. You're like leaving gouge marks in the walls and the ceiling as you go along. Oh my gosh, best guess ever. There's just this horrible scraping sound from both the Noir's horns. I, I call out, and I'm like, Micmac, I don't know that this was well thought out. Micmac turns around, which is, oh, <laughs> you're tall. Uh-huh. Yup. Hmm, this is a problem, a problem, a problem, a problem. I know. Perhaps we will have dinner on your ship. We will host as many as we can fit, comfortably. Excellent. And then he just waits for you to lead him back, which means walking Fans backwards about halfway around. down this hall. Like scraping on the ceiling. Oh no, there is no turning around. Yeah. <laughs> Walk backwards. 
<laughs> and so the procession walks backwards, scraping. As soon as my horns start to scrape anything, I'm just going to drop and crab walk because my horns yeah. are not going to be damaged by this ship. <laughs> and so getting back to your own ship, uh, Mick Mech says, I will grab the captain and we shall return. Fantastic. A few minutes later... <gasps> About 15 kobolds come in, each carrying trays, covered trays of food, and just scurrying past you in a stream into your galley, where they begin setting the table for dinner. Okay. And shortly thereafter enters Mikmek, along with a kobold who's missing a chunk of ear and wears a patch over one eye. Has the no-nonsense look of a captain who's seen a few things. Yes, says, hello, I am Nick Nock. I believe we spoke over the comm system. Probably. <laughs> I trust my crew were able to provide you the assistance you need. And then some. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I believe it is rude to keep you waiting for dinner. You must be starving. We're yeah. looking forward to spending the time getting to know you. <clears throat> excellent, excellent. Please, let us dine. And everyone retires to the dining room. And as you're about to dig in... Mikmek stands on his chair and clears his throat. <clears throat> oh, blessed Eve, we thank you for this bounty that you have laid before us. And he launches into a prayer, thanking this, this Eve for all that they have given, and then smiles and sits and begins eating. So who are they sitting next to? Are they next to the captain? Are they next to Absco? Who are they sitting next to? What's the... Well, that's a good question. <clears throat> what is it's your ship? What does your galley table look like, and what is your seating order? I think George is at the head of the table. <laughs> His arms are so big. <laughs> okay, George sits at one end of the table. I'm uh, just teasing. I don't know what our captain thinks. She probably would just sit wherever, because, like, she's not used to other people. Other than us. Other than, like, oh. <laughs> I'd like to do a diplomacy check to see if I can determine what's the best seating order for people. And uh, Culture check culture. would be, I think, I more appropriate. Unskilled, that's a nine. All right. You're, you're thinking back to the manners that you were taught. And for some reason, you didn't pay a whole lot of attention in, like, formal etiquette. Uh, but you're pretty sure that captains are supposed to be at the head of the table, but they're also supposed to sit, like, next to each other. If there's more than one, you, you can't quite remember. Sure, I'll make that happen. Why not? And I, since um, Kira is a mystic, I would probably put... Whatever their name is next to, uh, so the prayer was right in her face. Okay. That would be perfect. And then George on the other side. Okay. Because George is hilarious. All right. And down to dinner. Before you is a feast of roast plants and meats that you can't really identify. Okay. Hmm. Do the kobolds dive in, or are they waiting for, like, cure? Oh, the kobolds are, they, they are carving their offering to, to serve you some, and, and they begin telling you, this is roast gukluk. This is quite a tasty kind of treat. And, and this, here, we have uh, makluk in guglu sauce. Uh, can oh. I do, a, like, a life science check to see if any of this is, like, edible? <laughs> sure, us? yeah, yeah. Nice. 20. It appears to be pretty standard plant and meat proteins, barring... Anything that you're terribly unfamiliar with, uh, you figure the, the physiology is similar enough that you should be able to... As a matter of fact, that, that's something that's uh, perhaps a little surprising, is that they seem to share, as you're looking this over, uh, apparently they eat quite similarly to the people within the Pact Worlds that share a, a similar biology. Can I do a medis check Make sure the food isn't poison or something. Sure. 18. You don't see anything obviously toxic. We'll, we'll, we'll give you the the uh, Star Trek Deus Ex of the hand scanner, <laughs> where you can just scan things and get information. It looks it looks all right. It looks like it is compatible with your physiology. Once everyone has served Absco, we'll we'll start eating. It is delicious. Perfectly seasoned. Some ex some every once in a while you get like these exotic spices that you you don't have a word for because you've never tasted it before. But it is exquisitely cooked. the The meats are tender. The vegetables are cooked to absolute perfection, just tender enough, with while still retaining their crunch. So this I was gonna say this is amazing, Mac. Mac beams. 
I am glad you enjoy it. The knick-knock, the captain kind of clears his throat. <clears throat> I, I am pleased that you are enjoying our meal and uh, I hate to impose upon your own hospitality, but as you can tell, we don't often get people of your stature. Tell us, Captain. It seems like you had an idea that we would be here and it's so fortuitous for you to have arrived. Mick Mech beams and looks at the captain as the captain kind of looks at him a little bit sourly. Yes, we were brought here by a prophetic vision, which it appears for once was correct. And Mick Mech replies, everything comes to pass as she who has given us all can attest. And who exactly is she? He looks genuinely shocked and startled. You have not come seeking Evelyn? I mean, I might. <laughs> Why don't you tell me about well, Evelyn? It was millennia ago when we were but beasts on a planet. What came to us was Evelyn, the kind, the silver. She showed us the ways of civilization to build, to buy, to borrow, to defend ourselves, to ally with others. We learned all of this from her. And then she reascended to the sky after having come to us. And yet she did not abandon her people, no. She warned us of impending doom. And we left our home planet. And we have wandered the skies ever since, always following the visions of our Lady Eve. What's she look like? Oh, I, I can, uh, I can show you. Hold on. And he leaves. <laughs> the captain sits there kind of, uh, awkwardly. Uh, don't, please, don't mind, Micmac. Priests can get a little touched in the head sometimes. All that time sitting and talking to people who may or may not be there. Kind of looks to make sure the priest know other kobolds around and goes, oh, Don't get me wrong. I, I pay my obeisances, but, uh, I don't know. I found... Grit and some luck. That'll get you through the universe. Not relying on some uh, old myth about some some goddess. And he makes some some gesture as though, you know, the, the equivalent to us would be like crossing himself. Like, mm -hmm. He makes some some gesture that is like, if you're real, please don't strike me down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and before long, in comes Micmac, and he is carrying with him a portrait <sighs> that is covered in a veil. <laughs> Everyone's just waiting. Yeah. Just waiting. And as he unveils it, there before you, the very familiar sight. <laughs> oh, this is fortuitous indeed, wouldn't you say, Captain? Because Evelyn definitely sent us here. Definitely sent us to be here. Uh, the captain kind of hears that and he goes, Well, I don't know about all that, but maybe. Micmac shoots him a dirty look and goes, No, of course. Just as Evelyn sent us system to system. I received the vision from her three years ago that well, on you... this day, at this time, we would find you here, and look, we have. And what exactly did Evelyn tell you to do once you found us? He sort of stops and stutters, and the captain gets a little smirk on his face now. She goes, Evelyn, our, our lady does not always tell us what to do. Sometimes we must find the path ourselves. I think you're lying, just saying. <laughs> lying? Why would I do such a thing? Because Evelyn stole something from us. He again, looks shocked. Evelyn, a thief? No, you are surely mistaken. Our Lady Evelyn is not a thief. Do, do we have any um, recordings from the Adventure Hook show? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, you have a recording of it. I, I think we play back for for Mac that, that part. Even if Evelyn doesn't show up, we can try to convince him. Every time you say the name, I just hear Nick Mac okay. kind of whack. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Mac seems to get very excited. Doors open and the hook, and then when he sees the dragon enter, drops to his knees. And then as the dragon turns into the woman, he falls completely prostrate in front of the TV as the captain is just jaw to the floor. He wasn't sure this god existed, and now you're showing him video proof. Excellent. Perhaps we should have waited till- Stunned silence from the captain at the end of this, of this, and murmured prayers coming from Micmac. So, about that drift drive. The captain, I, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess that would explain why I picked one up. Uh, we'll have, we'll get the drift coil right away. That is, wow. And he just like, 
walks off in a daze. As he's walking, before he gets out of wow. the dip, I just want to, like, oh, and can you have your science officer reach out to me so we can maybe get the coordinates to your previous planet? Because we are definitely interested in finding out more about you. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Micmac, meanwhile, is completely prostrated in front of your vid screen, murmuring prayers. Can we turn that off? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the vid screen's off. He's still just, like, right where he fell, just praying. Uh, Micmac, I, I don't want to ruin a moment for you, but we need your attention. We are such jerks. <laughs> you you have all been touched. Touched. And, and he looks at Kira, and then he looks at his own hand, and he looks at you. Touched. As you realize and... that, yes... Go ahead. I don't know, it's like, and shot at, and poisoned. Oh, but none of that was Lady Evelyn's work, no. Or maybe it was. Maybe she needed to test you, I do not know her will, but you are all very special. Mm. Today will be a great day for the Silver Scale ship. Our bards shall sing of this forever and ever. No, th there's no need for that. I mean, I would like to have a song about me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there was a group of adventure hookers. <laughs> what? What is it that you need from Little Big Mac? Where can we find Evelyn? Do you know what her... She is everywhere is? and nowhere. She lives beyond our mortal plane. Well, she was definitely somewhere when she stole the adventure hook. Oh, she is known to visit the plane. In fact, our... Our stories of her say that she visited us many times, often in times of peril or great danger. In fact, our tales tell that she was once a mortal being. Oh, now that's interesting. Maybe we can receive copies of these tales. Oh, these holy I shall bring you our holy books. Oh, good. <laughs> I, yep. I can see that we have obviously given you a lot to think about, and I really hate to cut the night short, but perhaps it would be... This would be a great time for you to commune with your goddess on your ship and maybe just wrap your head around what's just happened. That might be good. Yes, I agree. Blessings of Eve upon you all. I am to you. I am to you. As goes back to ship. Sure enough, here are the mechanics they're going to install your drift coil. Sweet. Brand spanking new drift coil. Is there any market for a burned out drift coil? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is scrap. Okay. In fact, they ask, uh, me have this? I mean, I guess. Well, I think that falls under the purview of our lead engineer, so it's up to Phaedra. Yeah, but it's all yours. <laughs> Yay! They, they leap for joy and then they run off. I imagine they're like little workers. Your ship things. is repaired. There's, yeah. like, there's like four of them carrying it vast. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much it. Yeah, four of them like on their shoulders. Can we have this? <laughs> Yay! All four of them jump at once. And off they go. Awesome. Pretty much, yep. <laughs> once it's installed, All right. uh, I think I would, Phaedra and I would start looking to see if Bra is trying to incorporate themselves into our drift engine as well. Or if they're just like, eh, I can stop here. Bra is incorporating itself into the new drift coil. Okay. So, Captain, are we going to stick around here and, and, and talk with these kobolds some more? What, what, what do we need to be doing? I think that we've got all the information that we need from them. So did the captain send over like their previous uh, planet? Yep, a pilot to, to go back to the shuttle. Okay. Can you guys think of anything else so, you want to know? Once we get the... Um... Holy books, I think we're good to go. Oh, yeah, and the holy books. The pilot and the holy books, you're all set. Uh, you can take the you take the kobold down to the planet, get his shuttle. Yeah. Yeah. And then as you are preparing to break orbit, uh, after you have returned him down for his shuttle and come back, the captain, the captain is hailing us again. Put him on screen. The captain comes through, and th there stands Micmac. Micmac says, I trust that your journey will go well. Our science officer is sending over everything that we have on our history. Go in the icy embrace of Eve. <laughs> Thanks. Y you too. And then they drift drive out of there. And that is going to be all the time that we have for today. 
So thank you for watching and listening to us uh, for Experience Points. I am Miu. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Miu Plays Games. I'm Kelrick. You can find me on Twitter at EQ Points or at Cormalon. I am Taylor. You can find me on Twitter at Milky Games. I'm Megan. You can find me on Twitter at Dungeons and Meg or on Tumblr at Tiefling to Tiefling. And I'm Punder. You can find me on Twitter at Punder Drone. And we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Before we end this episode, I would like to send a very special thank you to the entire cast of Roll to Fail podcast. If you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend it. They're one of my must-listen casts. And uh, the reason I'm saying thank you to them is they have been so gracious and kind reaching out to us since we posted on Twitter about Megan and Taylor having to step away from our podcast and offering any assistance they can. They have just been just delightful, and we're so glad to have them in our Potter and family. So absolutely, if you have the time, you should check them out and just let them know how wonderful they are. Thanks.